The Seventh Commandment, Deuteronomy 518. This is the first video about the Seventh Commandment, and it's about adultery. There will be one more video. It's called Lustful Intent. We live in a world, you know, that we see many things, you know, that are sexual that, that aren't right. You know, they don't agree with what God commands. For, ex you know, for example, what's spelled out in the Seventh Commandment. The Seventh Commandment, you know, it, it covers a lot of things. You know, society resists the law. You know, resists God in this. Because the law limits their sexual activities. You know, people don't like it. They want more sexual activities and for it to be okay. Adultery itself, you know, it's a serious sin against God, against His law for two reasons. One is, adultery goes against the first covenant, the first covenant that our Creator made between people long time ago in the beginning, our Creator, He gave this holy command, you know, that there would be sex in, in one place. And where is that? Well, it's within the marriage covenant. And the, the Bible's clear about this. People would be, become one flesh within marriage, and there would be great joy and no shame. And where is this found? Well, the only place is in the marital relationship. There's love between a woman and a man. You know, number one, adultery. Adultery itself, you know, goes against God, you know, and his, his first covenant between persons. And secondly, adultery, you know, rejects the great truth of the marital relationship between one woman and one man. It's rejecting God himself. And the reason is because he established the wonderful marital relationship. Adultery goes against God. It's like spitting in his face. You know, it goes against his holy authority, breaking the seventh commandment means you're talking bluntly to God, you know, saying, you know, you don't have any right to have ordered the very first covenant, you know, which is the foundation to society. You know, it, we say we, God doesn't have any right to make this relationship between a man and a woman, then, you know, then we're saying that God is not sovereign over any relationship. For example, between children and parents. Is that true? You know, that he doesn't have a right? Of course not. Adultery itself, it blasphemes God and His glory. We read in, in the Bible and God says what He says about marriage. And it's very clear that adultery is not allowed. You know, it's, it's blaspheming God. And the Bible, got, the Bible says that God's relationship between people, the spiritual church, is, is like the bride and the bridegroom. Also, worshiping false gods, that's the same as adultery. Adultery itself, it is idolatry. And adultery means that, you know, you're refusing to, to acknowledge God as the covenant Lord. When you're involved in adultery, you know, you don't, you don't want God as your Lord. You don't. Instead, what do you want as your God? Well, it's sex. And, you know, well, that... That really hurts your relationship with Christ. You know, Christ has accepted the church as his bride. And he has proven that as a, as a bridegroom, he would never fail to be faithful. Now, how do we apply this to our Christian life? A long time ago, the Israelites, they were involved in worshiping idols. This had terrible consequences. It, it damaged their relationship with God. And, you know, the adultery is a sin. It damages your relationship between people here on earth.
Now, you know, we understand that adultery itself, you know, it goes against God in his first covenant, which is between a man and a woman in marriage. And also, it damages different relationships between us and God, and also relationships between family members and relatives, like your uncles and your aunts, your grandparents, your cousins. You know, all relationships get hurt through that understand that that should be enough you know to make you not be involved in adultery god himself is sovereign over all and we are under him we should not commit adultery we should not have that arrogance in us we should know better and try to resist this temptation and the things that lead us to it so what do we do well we guard our hearts we guard our hearts against it and secondly we keep holding on to the love of our spouses and that will help us to resist temptation for adultery. Probably, you know, you've heard stories or maybe like, you know, seeing on TV a movie or something like that about husband and wife and, and one or the other gets into adultery. You know, maybe they get caught or maybe one confesses and says, yes, I committed adultery. And what do they tend to say? Well, they tend to say, well, you know, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean to. It just happened. Is that true? No, that's ridiculous. It didn't just happen. There's always a beginning to the progression of that, always. And you know, why the Bible says we need to guard our hearts all the time against this. You know, if you get involved emotionally and you start having lust for another person, well, you've already started the progression you know, it'll be very hard for you, you know, if you wait and you don't cut that person off. It would be best to just focus on your spouse, you know, to save your marriage. And, and, you know, it's better if you just cut that other person off. Don't see that other person. Don't get in contact with them. Nothing. Quorum deal.